Hey, this is Darren Becker, and you're watching The Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practice Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're growing a dental practice, one of the things that you're thinking about is how you're losing your mind because you spend all your time thinking about work. And today we're going to talk about the topic of balance and does balance really exist with somebody who's truly an expert, at Dr. Darren Becker. And you are going to see, I love this guy, and it's an awesome topic, especially for a Friday. So do not miss this. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You're going to love this. Now, a couple show notes. We're shooting this live on Facebook. So if you have questions and you want to ask Darren directly, just add him to the feed and I'll ask him while he's on the broadcast. Or if you're watching him later on and you want to know a little bit more, continue to add questions to the feed and we'll ask the man himself because we want you guys to get the most out of this. Also, I am just absolutely loving the show suggestions. So you guys keep sending them to us. We're going to line them up as best we can. We've got some of the world's best experts in dentistry lined up here over the next couple of weeks, and uh, you will see it. it's going to be awesome. I uh, I really appreciate all the shares, too. Now we're up over 39,000 followers on Facebook. Over 150,000 of you have visited us on iTunes, and I don't have anything to say other than thank you. So uh, my guest today, Dr. Darren Becker. Now, I was telling him before we got on, like, I'm so mad he doesn't live closer. And I saw him wearing, like, sh so it's same it's same shirt day. So um, <laughs> we're all on. And actually, Dr. Frank Graziano is watching. So what's up, Frank? Hey, Frankie. Frankie. So it's so fun because um, all of these people are just so instrumental in my background. And Darren, you and I have known each other for a long, long time. Uh, many people who are watching this know who you are. But if somebody's watching this, they've never heard of you. Um, tell them a little bit. Tell your story. Who's Dr. Darren Becker? Where do you practice? Who are you? So Sure. So uh, I, first of all, thank you for having me on again. This is uh, fun for me. Uh, I told my wife I'm doing this just so I can have an excuse to, to hang out with my buddy. Uh, yeah. So I, I practice here in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been here 21 uh, years. Yeah, I can't even believe it's 21 years. Uh, I've got a private practice uh, and mostly adult restorative. We do a lot of interdisciplinary complex cases, working with the specialists. And, um, you know, my, my journey is an interesting one, I think. I, I, I was not originally heading in the dental field. My bachelor's degree was in computer science. And um, as I was getting out of school and working in the computer industry, it just it wasn't turning me on. It wasn't for me. And I did have the opportunity to travel a bunch with my dad when he would go out and lecture. My dad's Erwin Becker, who was the chairman at the Panky Institute for 30 years. Uh, he would take me with him when he would go lecture and because we'd usually go fishing. Mm -hmm. And I would sit and listen to these lectures and I would hang around with all these dentists and they're like, they loved what they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, well, maybe I'd be good at that. And so I went and worked at a dental lab and kind of got my hands wet and realized I could do it. I had the skills in my hands. Um, and then... You know, the I went to dental school, obviously, and uh, the rest of that's history. I got most of my real training, though, from my mentors, which is something else we should probably mention, is having mentors, there's nothing more important, I think, in, in growth uh, for each of us. But uh, And then also studying at places like the Panky Institute. So mm -hmm. um, it's just been, it's been a great ride. We're not done, obviously, but, uh, um, you know, that's kind of where I come from. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And my journey started along, you know, it's so funny how our, all, all our paths intersect. You know, you, myself, Dr. Frank Graziano, all these guys, two of my early trips were to see Pete Dawson and then to go to a place called the Panky Institute. And I thought, you know, a mentor put me on a plane, said, you're going to go. And I'm like, I don't know. What, I don't even know what this place is. Sounds a little strange. And I went, I loved it. Your dad was my C1. They called them C1s back then. And Clayton Davis was my other instructor. And not only in the classroom was it a transformative experience, but really in the condos at night, that was where the real learn, because they would share stuff and you'd go, no way, you are kidding me. And they told you the truth. And in that, not only did you learn a lot, 
but you met some incredible people that were just part of your journey and still are. I talked to Clayton earlier this week and your dad's been an incredible for So like the journey in dentistry and the thing, the other thing that I saw was exactly what you saw is that there were so many people that loved this profession. And so today we're going to be talking about this whole thing that's balanced. Is it elusive? Now I want to talk about the why before we get into the how, because you You've met dentists all over the world. You've seen some of the best clinicians of all time. And we get to see their lives. We get to see their practices. Why is the topic of balance so important? Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, it is because what we do, first of all, is challenging. It's physically demanding. Mm -hmm. It's emotionally demanding. It, and and if, you're not, if, if you're not in a good place, you can't help anybody. You can't right. help your patients. You can't help your team, your family, whatever. So, um, you know, learning and understanding that, that there are lots of places in our lives that need our attention and, and those places. So Dr. Pankey stole from Aristotle and he talked about the, the, the cross of life, which is work and play, uh, love. And he said, worship, I call it spirituality. And in the middle was happiness and whatever, whatever happiness meant to, to the, each person individually, they didn't want to tell you what you had to do, but. Uh, just knowing that those places exist in your life and that you better not ignore any one of them, because if you do, you might be in trouble. And um, and now having said that in your topic, I love the title being in perfect balance. I don't know that that should be the goal either. I, I don't know that anybody really is. And those who are, I think, are, um, you know, they're the most boring people on the planet or, as you said, retired Right. Um, I, I, I don't know that that's really the goal. I think it's understanding that and, and being able to, um, prioritize and, and putting your, putting your effort and your energy on the things that are most important and, um, and, and, and not ignoring any other aspect of your life that needs attention. So, um, and, and one of the things that I learned later on in my studies was when you can combine different parts of that cross it raised the level of, of the, of the experience. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as an example, if, if you were, um, uh, you know, going to a meeting, going to a dental meeting, okay, that we'll call that work. Cause, cause you're working, but you're going to go with your periodontist. Who's your good right. buddy because you guys hang out together. And so all of a sudden you're with somebody who you could say maybe, well, love is that's, that's a good friend. Right. Um, and in addition to going to the lectures and learning a lot from you when you're up there speaking, uh, we go out to dinner that night. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of, you know, fun, a little bit of right. play in there. Uh, and, and, you know, just, just that, just combining those three things really raises the level of the experience. You could have just gone to the meeting, gone to the lecture, sat in your room and ordered room service. Right. You would have heard the same stuff, but it might not have been the same. So yeah. I, I, I find that to be an interesting, an interesting one. Um, and, and to talk about spirituality, cause like you, when you first started going to Pank, you're like, what the hell is this crazy thing? Mm -hmm. There, there can be a misconception if you just hear the surface of this thing, when you look at the spirituality arm or the worship arm, for some people that does mean, uh, organized religion, which is great. Mm -hmm. But for some people it's, it's sometimes more than that or something other than that. As an example, when you're doing your finest crown preparation and you make a exquisite provisional and the tissue that had been kind of angry and irritated uh, uh, and, and is bleeding and whatever, you know, two weeks later you go to put the permanent crown in and the tissue is beautiful and amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, is that because you're so great at making a provisional? Well, yeah. I mean, you had to do a nice job or it wouldn't work, but you didn't make the tissue better. The, 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 Mother Nature made the, the tissue better, and you better mm -hmm. recognize that because when it doesn't happen, you do everything right, and it doesn't happen, you're gonna beat yourself up. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, that's not yeah. there either. So I don't know. I, I I like that way of looking at it. Yeah, and we could spend hours from all the things that we've, you know, Bill Lockard, who's got to be close to 90 now, one of the panky greats said this, Kirk, hey, perfection is deadly in dentistry. I think excellence is a good job and uh, is a good goal. He said every once in a while, it was perfect and it wasn't my doing, it was God's doing. I was like, oh, that's a perfect de definition of like, 
how it all came together for him, whether it be organized religion or not. Now, I want to go back to this, too, because, you know, you and I were having this discussion because so many young dentists and I talk to them all the time. They're working crazy hours. Some of them working oh, yeah. 220 days a year. Some of them work until 7 p.m. at night. Now, I'm just going to say this because I'm getting older and I don't really care what anybody says. There are so <laughs> many people out there on the lecture circuit saying work Saturdays, but they've never worked a Saturday in their life themselves. And they'll say, that's how you grow a practice. Well, that's also how you destroy a family and get divorced as fast as possible and miss you know, a baseball game. My son last year, he's 10 this year, last year at age nine, he hit his first home run. And it wasn't like, like, I swear it was one of the most important days of my life. It took the other coaches. They were holding me back because I wanted to carry him around. They're like, no, you got to let him run around the bases himself. And I thought to myself, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have traded that day for anything in the world. And so, you know, it's not about having perfect here. I think that's the key is what we want to do is, but like, does balance really exist? And um, I think it's, it's just this balance is not a good word. It's just get the big things in, like, make sure you get the big things in whatever they are. You have to figure out what they are. And then everything else is just little stuff. Would you agree? Oh, totally. I, totally. And, and get the big things in it and, and knowing what's the big thing. What if you'd have missed that game? I mean, you'd have just beaten yourself up. You'd have been so yeah. upset about that. And so would he, you know, your kid would have been upset. Uh, so knowing that that's an important thing, I got to right. go to that. I got to go to my girl's dance recital. Um, do I really want to sit there for five hours, every other kid dance while my kids, you know, until her three minute dance comes up? No, yeah. but am I in tears for those three minutes? Absolutely. And I wouldn't miss it for the world. And yeah. and it's, it's, you know, it'd be easy to be like, Oh, I really can't go to this one. You know, it's just three minutes. It doesn't matter. It's not about that. And, right. and, and so finding those things that, you know, you just, you can't miss that. Yeah. Um, and, and oftentimes there are sort of, I don't want to say once in a lifetime, but you know, somebody says, Hey, uh, the, whatever, somebody's coming to lecture in town and you'd normally have to fly thousands of miles and pay millions of dollars or thousands of dollars to go see somebody. They're going to be in your hometown. Right. You go see them, you know, right. you, you do it. Uh, it's, I just, I think you got to find those, those things that are really important and, and not miss them. Right. And this is on the same vein, but let's say I'm a 32 year old dentist watching this, Darren. And I go, yeah, it's really easy for you to say, but I have 5,000 patients. I've got PPOs everywhere. I got pressures from patients. My team members don't think patients will come during the hours that we work and they think we're too expensive already. So easy for you to talk about balance, but I haven't taken a vacation in so long. What would you say to that? Um, take a vacation. <laughs> The business will be there when you get back. That's exactly right, and and all the everything you left will still be there too. Right now, now I, I'm, I'm going to piggyback because I, I want to hear your answer, but I got to add this so I don't forget. Like, because uh, you have these experiences too. Like Charlie Verapapa was my favorite early on, and he used to say to his team, "He's like, look, I'm going to the Panky Institute, or I'm going to Italy. If the practice burns down, don't call me." You know. <laughs> And he, it was a message. I mean, he was like, as long as you're okay, you know what I mean? But, but his point was this, look, you guys figure it out. I trust you figure it out. I'm going to enjoy the experience. I'm going to give myself permission to be there. And you guys figure it out. The other thing he would do at the Panky Institute, this is back when they had phones. Remember they had the little phone room there? Oh yeah, the little phone when room. When a doctor was calling back to the office, like at the break going, hey, what did we collect today? He would walk up and hang up the phone. And the, the, the doctor would go, what are you doing? He'd go, get in the room and pay attention just as a point, like be here. Like yeah. wherever you are, be here. And that's a really... That's a really important lesson is just try to be there, right? What are, what are their lessons? Like, what would you say to a 32-year-old dentist who's struggling with this? Well, I think, uh, well, first of all, I would say be present. That, that, yeah. that I think that's what you were saying. But, um, you know, I, I can't, I honestly don't have the experience because I never had the big, busy 5,000 patient practice and all that. Um, I, I went the other direction. I started off small and kept it that way. But, um, you know, what we, what we have seen in literally thousands of dentists who, who are at the breaking point, they haven't had a vacation in years, they're working Saturdays until 7.30 at night every day, uh, 5,000, whatever, um, is, is it, first of all, you got to figure out how much is enough. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, both in terms of how much is enough for, to take home, you know, what do I need to live? And, and live the way I want to live and, and all that. And then, you know, what do I need in my practice to make, to do that? 
Right. Uh, it is, there is a financial question to ask, and you have to do the math and figure it out. But here's what I found. Um, for the most part, patients are going to show up and come to your office not because of any gimmick or because you've got a special deal. They may originally do that, but they won't stay. Mm -hmm. um, th they're going to come because of the relationship they build with you and your team. Right. And so if you're, if you're able to develop a relationship, uh, you're going to have all the patients you need and they're going to send more patients to you. Now to make that work. I mean, it, don't, first of all, don't, go in and, and throw out the, what is it, throw out the baby with the bathwater or whatever? Yep, yeah, don't just do, don't go in and, and change everything all at once. You got to take your time and do it slower. You could really make a mistake. But, but I think, yeah, you know, drop your, drop your least uh, profitable plan. Right. Just, just do one thing. Um, mm -hmm. Raise your fees a little bit. Don't go in, don't do Saturdays. Right. Um, you know, the reality of the situation is people will, sh if they want to come see you, they're going to come when you're there. Right. Um, we work, we, we see patients seven to three, three thirty, Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. And, and we do that and, and, uh, you know, and your practice we, hasn't died uh, yet. We we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we started out where, when I, when I actually bought the practice, he was doing that two days a week uh -huh. and he had, he had nine to five thirty two two days a week mm -hmm. and every other day. And, uh, we slowly, and they were, everyone was so afraid. Um, we slowly switched it to all four days to be early days. Cause I have little kids. I want to get home to my kids mm -hmm. and it, lo and behold, no one left, you know, like yeah. they come when you're there. Yeah. Uh, you know, people, uh, I always use the hairdresser as the best example. Um, hairdressers for the most part do not work. Because you have a hairdresser, right? Clearly not. <laughs> we have the same one. Me neither. Um, but you're right. You're exact, ac absolutely right. And actually, there was an email chain that was going around recently. Somebody was asking a question about cancellations, and we, and we used the hairdresser thing. I said, ladies do not cancel their hairdresser appointment. Why? Because they know they'll never get back. It'll be so hard to get back in. Right. Uh, and and I think sometimes that's totally off the subject. Sorry, but but the hairdresser makes a good a good example of a lot of different things for us that they they've kind of got it right. <laughs> I don't think it's off the subject at all because I think one of the most important pieces of figuring this out is that everybody has 24 hours a day. The best kept secret of the rich is not because they're crazy smart. They just know how to use the 24 in a more advantageous way. And people are scientifically getting really good about this now. Um, and I talk about this all the time, but Tom Brady sleeps on average nine hours a night. Jeff Bezos, who is the richest man of the modern era, over $151 billion he's worth. And you would think the guy works 24 seven, but he doesn't. He sleeps on average eight hours a night and doesn't schedule any morning meetings because he's got the most important things. He knows to run this business. I can only work so hard. It requires my brain to function at the highest level. And he also has breakfast with his family before he embraces the chaos. So a perfect example of like, hey, look, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to get the big things in first. The other thing, I think it was John Maxwell who said this. He said the big things are like glass balls and you juggle them. And the little things are like rubber balls. You can drop the rubber balls, but you drop the glass ball, there's a good chance you can't fix it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, so whether it be health and, and, you know, we talked about health before we got on, like you don't really, and really, if you step back and take a look at it, just the whole thing, like you don't really have a problem until you have a health problem. Like right. every other problem, bankruptcy can be fixed, you know, a disaster with a case can be fixed, but you know, colon cancer, mm, I don't know. We don't know. You know what I mean? So like, uh, nothing has got to be caught early. It's got to be caught early in the precautions and the, you know, the protocols. And I think the challenge is this, and I've heard so many people at the Panky Institute say this, and I heard this years ago, you come back, people go, how's it going? Well, we're busy. And they go, that's not a good word. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? I'm I don't know if busy is a good word anymore. I'm like, that is so spot on. Cause I don't know that I want to be busy, right? I want to be productive, but I don't want to be busy. What do you think? Uh, no, totally. I, I I would much rather be productive than busy. I my favorite days in the practice are when there's four patients on the schedule, mm -hmm. um, or one patient on the schedule, but they're yeah. there the whole day. <laughs> but you're uh, intentional about making that. That didn't just fall into your office. No, no, no. You don't we, work we, in this exclusive, like high end, you know, place where people regular, just have. I have a regular practice. The Wait, people don't come in with a wad of cash and say, Hey, look, like I want to get all these done. Let's no, do and this. In fact, the wealthiest ones definitely don't, but, um, 
the teachers come in with a lot of cash because that's what they got. Now, um, but yeah, I, first of all, and I think you, you touched on this before, sitting in the condos at, at the Panky Institute, and you're with the, the faculty and, and, and people who have, you know, gone there before you, and you hear their story, and it's like, wait, they're just regular people? They, mm -hmm. they, they go to the bathroom like I do, and they put their pants on one leg at a time, and yeah. they have to deal with crap that I deal with. And not every day are they doing these big cases. That's, yes, we do big cases. It's great. I love it when I have one or two or three or four patients on the schedule and that's it. It's a big, busy day, product, most productive day for sure. And the most fun. Mm -hmm. But that's that's two days a month, three days a month. Right. You know, the rest of the time I'm doing regular dentistry. But always with the idea of um, you know doing what's best for the patient, doing it in a very um, intentional, comprehensive with an endpoint in mind, um, even if it's just doing the one crown or the one filling or whatever, it's it's how does this fit in the big picture of this person's overall dental health? And so, uh, you know, doing that actually frees up time. Yeah. When you're when you're when you're when you're prepared that way, every case is that way, and um, and again, and then you can't do it without a good team. Yeah. The team is uh, you know the most important thing. I if if it was up to me, I'd probably be in trouble because like I don't have the organizational skills to keep my lab cases in order like my team does or to order the supplies like they do. I mean, they do so much stuff that I can't do. It's right. just not in my wheelhouse. And uh, so that's 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 even another part of balance is, is right. balancing out, you know, the, the relationship with the team. Right. Because they're really the ones that make it happen more often than not. And I always, I don't joke about this, but this is really, if I, if we were speaking to Chapel Hill dental students today and we had our top 10 restorative docs and then go, you're going to walk in there. You're going to give them one piece of advice. You got to walk out. What would it be for a long career success in dentistry? All of them would say, hands down, surround yourself with good people and then get out of their way or give them all the tools to succeed. Good luck. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because it'll make it keeps you in the right mindset too, because you got a couple squeaky wheels in your office. Your brain is on the squeaky wheel all day. You're not thinking about the team members that do really well. I joke with my team all the time. Like my favorite team members, I go, I never think about you. And they're like, what do you mean by that? I go, I never think about, I don't have to think about you. And they're like, why? Cause you, you do it. You make it happen. They keep you accountable. They keep you in the circle doing what you do. And it's awesome. Now, again, I have so many questions I want to ask you because you were, you know, our paths are so, and number one, I always enjoy being with you. We should probably open a beer or a glass of wine because it's Friday afternoon and just enjoy ourselves. And if you ever get a chance, go to Atlanta, have dinner with this guy. It's not a dinner. It's like a nine hour experience and waiters come from every direction. And before you know it, you're laughing so hard you can't breathe. Um, and I even brought my in-laws with you one night and they still that talk so about that fun. meal. That was so much fun. You took us to uh, La Grotta. Uh, Oh yeah, I was in a basement somewhere, and I thought we were gonna be left for dead. I don't know. It was it was unbelievable in uh, Atlanta. But go back to this. You mentioned um, earlier how important is learning from a mentor about balance because I'm gonna lead you with the question. I don't know that you could figure out balance on your own. You need the help of someone in the condo or wherever a panky to go look. But you you got to figure this. So how important is the role of a mentor? I think it's maybe second to surround yourself with a good team. <laughs> um, right. uh, and, and, and sometimes it's one mentor who's just, you know, that's somebody who takes you under your wing. Sometimes you may have several mentors, somebody who's helping you in one area of your practice, one area of your life, whatever. Um, and, and, you know, standing on their so shoulders is, is what it's about. And there's so many people who are willing to, to be that for you um, I was fortunate early on that I had several great mentors and, and still do. Um, and I'm now mentoring a couple of uh, younger dentists and that's actually super rewarding as well, but, uh, trying to, trying to pass it on, I guess, but the, the, the value of a mentor it, it's, and this is really important. It's up to the mentee mm -hmm. to make it happen. If you're sitting around waiting for your mentor to call you and be like, hey, bud, whatever, I mean, they might do that once or twice, but it, it's, it's, uh, hey, can I come over and, and watch you work on this, you know, treatment plan? Or uh, can we get together? I've got this case. I've got a question about, it. I'd love your help with it. Uh, you, you've got to be the one who, uh, who goes after it, you know, with somebody who's offered. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So if, if you're watching this and you don't have a mentor, you get a me- mentors don't find you. You find the mentor and then you make the magic happen. Now, I have a virtual co-host. His name's Deepak on the Best Practice Show. He asks the best questions. They're thoughtful. And so he's he he's asking you a question and you're going to have to comment on this one. Can you comment on the temporary role of imbalance as you build a business? You know, a Panky Institute, complete dental school, et cetera. And then how do you transition back to a state of maintainable balance? Because we were talking about this before Ghana. Nobody has this life where it's perfectly balanced. You get out of balance. You go, this is crazy. I got to get back. Um, Comment on that, the state of imbalance, and how do you get back into a state of maintaining what we might refer to as balance? So, yeah, uh, I was talking earlier you know, this summer, we slow down for the summer. I take yeah. more days off. We, we, the kids go to camp. My wife and I take a little time off. We travel. Um, and, and so I'm out of balance in one way because I'm not spending as much time at my office. Um, but then guess what? Fall comes around and we are kicking into high gear. Right. And there's not a whole lot of uh, play time uh, you know, in the next several months, because, you know, now's the time to make it happen. So, so it's, it's at any one given moment, you're probably not in balance, but it's, oh, yeah. it's making sure you're not ignoring those other parts of your life. Right. So, so even though I'm working harder, I'm having to stay at the office a little bit later doing some lab cases and whatever I'm doing. Um, uh, there's meetings that come up that we've got to do. And, and, and so, not as much time spent on having fun. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm honestly not doing as much of my recreation right now, but I know it's out there and I'm not right. going to ignore it. And I'm planning for more recreation when that time is free. Right. Uh, and then we were talking about this before we went on. I think being able to find places where you can combine parts of your uh, you know, life. So, so I use the example, if you go to a dental meeting, you may go to some great dental meeting and, and that would go under work and you're going to hear some great lectures from people like Kirk and you're going to learn from that. You're going to take that back and it's going to really help your practice. That's spending time working. Right. But you might go and do that with your good buddy, Periodontist, who you're best buds with. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden you're doing that with a friend. Right. So you've combined two arms of the, of the, of the cross. And, you know, in the evening you might go out for a nice dinner and, 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 and have a glass of wine and recreation, if you will. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, you're staying at a nice hotel, maybe they've got a nice gym. There's no, no kids around to bother you. You can get up early in the morning and go work out or after the lecture and go work out. And, and, and now this, what was, could have just been a go to a lecture, right. Go sit in your room and order room service turned into something that was all encompassing. And it, and it, it raised the level of that experience. Right. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, and I would I would totally echo your sentiment. I now we're in August, right? So it's August 17th today and I'm completely out of balance and and I'm in the same boat as you cuz this whole entire week I'm screaming in my house at 11:30 go to bed. Okay. These kids got, you know, or 1030, like they got to go home. Like, and they're like, dad, it's summer. I go, I have a job. You know what I mean? And and so sleep is compromised, you know, all that kind of stuff, but at least your expectations around that time period is so important. And we only get so many summers with our kids and then they're gone. And that's why in dentistry, you could throttle back. It never, it it always used to amaze me that dentists would cut back their hours in summer and then they go, September's here. Let's work evenings, weekends, and Saturday. I'm like, why? You don't have to do that either. You know, you got to keep it in, uh, we get one shot at this thing called life, but you know what? If you got good thinking around it, you're going to be okay. Now, one more thing. I've not, not true. A hundred more things. Parkinson's law. Are you familiar with Parkinson's law? Do you know what Parkinson's law is? I know what Parkinson's disease is. Well, it's different. It's Parkinson's law. So if you're listening to this, Google this afterwards. Now, I'm going to totally screw it up and paraphrase it. But basically, Parkinson's law is that every task will expand to the time you give it. That's oh, why yeah. a dental student will take three hours doing amalgam because you gave them three hours to do it. Same thing in work. You know, if you give yourself work hours, you're going to fill them. And it's amazing in a seven to three third, like you got to get stuff done. You got to hit cues. And it's amazing how much better you are when you're focused and in the zone and it allows you to be. Able, and also to how old are you today, Darren? 50. You're 50. So you're now at a place where you can't think after three 30. So if you're going to go do what you do best, you're going to diagnostics 
drive your practice and your ability to do the dentistry, you want to be able to, to, to be in autopilot mode about 3.30, right? Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, that's so true. And even to the point that, so, you know, we do our um, once or twice a month, we do our, our specialist meeting where we get together with all the specialists and go over all the interdisciplinary cases. I've started bringing one of my team members with me. That's because awesome. I, I can't, because those are usually in the evening, five o'clock or whatever. I can't um, focus uh, on the conversation, thinking about the case, and take the notes or write them down. Right. So she's there writing down the notes. And yeah. she then takes that back to the practice the next day and makes sure whatever has to happen, happen, the follow-up with the patients, whatever. So, um, yeah, I, I've recognized it. I am... Homework with my kids, I'm a nightmare because I, I'm it's at night and I'm not as sharp at night as I am in the morning anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, morning, if, you, if you're a patient, be sure to come in in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Dentistry is the coolest profession because you get the right to story. Every day you write a page in the book of your life and you can say, nope, I'm doing it this way. And you can choose to train patients to come in the hours that you work. And, you know, I'll, I'll just say this. I'm no different than you if you're watching this. When I'm exhausted, I'm half, if not a quarter of the human being I could be. I'm just fried. I'm making bad decisions. I'm not saying the right words. I can't think. And so you got to have enough in the tank, especially in dentistry. Like it's it's an amazing profession, but you can't exhaust yourself in doing, doing everything. So you at half energy is still <laughs> twice as much as the average person. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm I'm right around the corner from you. I'm 48, so I'm two years behind you. And I know I'm gonna life is like this big sponge, man. I'm gonna squeeze it for all it's worth. And you and I are gonna have dinner many more times. I'm gonna laugh my butt off as much as I possibly can. <laughs> what other key components were learning points for you? Being out of balance or in balance, as we use that term for a lack of better terms to describe it, that were pivotal moments for you. So, yeah, it's an interesting question. I hadn't actually thought of it that way. There's certainly been times in my life where, I, you know, way out of whack. So when I first started, uh, when I first bought my practice, I was an associate for several years. When I, when I was in my practice for the first time, I was spending way too much time in the office mm -hmm. um, trying to do everything. I, I hadn't yet trained my team. I wasn't, I, I was surrounded by good people, but they just hadn't yet been trained. So I was doing lots and lots of things that could have been delegated. So I was at the office until six, seven o'clock every night, even though we might've finished patients at three 30. Mm -hmm. Um, and definitely neglecting the family, uh, you know, not intentional, but I wasn't intentional about not neglecting them. Right. Uh, kind of missing some things and so forth. And somebody very wise, Kirk Barrett, uh, came and, uh, came and visited my practice and helped me a ton to, to say, you got to take care of yourself. You got to be with your family. And, and it was at a perfect time for me, um, to, to, to do that. I, and I thank you for that, by the way. Um, that was when we went through our, our, uh, year with, with Act Dental doing our, our whole thing. That was, I mean, that was transformative, but that's, that was when that all kind of came together for me. Hey, it's our pleasure, but you did all the work, buddy. And sometimes, and I'm no different, you know, and, and I don't know how I would ever survive. I have a coach and I actually spoke to my coach this morning. He slaps the heck out of me every day and says, don't do that. That's dumb. And you're like, ah, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, and it's, it's, it's very, very important. Now, the other thing is that these people that have come before you, we talked about the condos talk that we, you know, those experiences I'll hold deep in my heart for years because think about it. These guys have been practicing for 30 years. They've probably seen 10,000 patients and had 10,000 conversations and fired 400 team members or something like that. <laughs> not that they, not that that's the thing to do, but they've lived those lives enough to say, don't do that. And as a young clinician, you know, this is true to do one thing. Thing and make a mistake, it's okay. But to repeat it is stupid. And so the valued expertise of a great mind is should never be discounted. Like it's, it's so I love it when I watch a young dentist asking really good questions to somebody who's been there. And it's like, I've been there. I'm coming out of the woods, all bloodied up. I've been to where you're headed. Don't do that. Get home because your practice will still be there. Do you know what I mean? Get to the game. You know, and I remember seeing a lot of these. I, mem I remember Frank Graziano at the end of a day. He's like, we're going. I'm like, this place is still home. And Brian Gray, same thing. I'm like, this place is still running. He's like, nope, got to go pick up my daughter. 
And I'm like, what a great dad. And I, I, I mean, I got to see, I've seen your dentistry. I've seen Brian's. I've seen Frank's. Cool, gorgeous dentist, like crazy gorgeous. But the things I think about with you guys more than anything, great dads, like great dads, unbelievable dads. And at the end of the day, I don't know if there's anything more that matters. Do you know what I mean? Than that. And so dentistry becomes a vehicle that you can do that, but you got to believe it can happen. Then you also got to find the right people to be around so that you can go back and go, look, we're doing this. And then people start to follow your lead. Patients follow your lead. They do. They yeah, really do. And, and you don't have a shortage of people coming to you and go, hey, look, I can't, you know, do you have any evening hours? I, that question hasn't gone away for you. People still ask you. You go, nope, you're coming in during when we work. And they go, okay. Yeah. And and by the way, maybe somebody doesn't. Maybe they literally can't. That's right. That's fine. That, that's okay. I can't treat every person in Atlanta. Yeah. Even if even if I wanted to and if they wanted to see me, I physically couldn't do it. So there's enough pay, There's more patients than there are dentists. So uh, would I be? Somebody who wanted to see me and I couldn't see them, sure. But the reality is they're going to come when I, I – I have a life. I have a family, and, and, and they need to understand that. Um, you know, the, the, the new uh, concierge doctor thing that they have, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you have one of those, but, you know, like you pay sure. up front for the year. To the, yep. Guess what? Dentists are so stupid. We've been doing that without charging for it forever. For years. Right? Yeah. We're on call for them all the time. They call. Right. They sit. Uh, you know, we, we have been doing concierge dentistry, just not charging for it. But, um, yeah, I, I think the, the, the place or the having mentors to help guide you not to make the same mistakes or, or not make them as severely is such a big deal. Uh, you, you, you talk about the evenings at Panky. I, I remember it was my C3 and back then, Parker Mahan, rest in peace, would come down and do a full day. Yeah. Now, Parker May, I was lucky enough. I went to University of Florida. Go Gators. There you go. Um, uh, and Parker was a faculty member there. So I had known him all through dental school. And we had the note service deal, you know, where like one student yeah. would, would take the notes and then you distribute it every day. Well, when a regular professor would teach a 50 minute class, it was a two page when we went front and back. That was the lecture. Parker Mahan spoke so fast that it was like four pages back and front for the same hour. Okay, fast forward, I'm in C3, we're at dinner. Now, first of all, this guy, talk about Renaissance man. He he knows everything about everything, you know? Right. So he's interested in the food, the wine, the who made the table. Like I mean, like things that you don't even notice. We get back to the condos and somebody's going over a case or something. I'm sitting next to Parker on the couch and I lean over and I go, Parker, I gotta tell you something. Um, I, I, I don't want you to take it the wrong way, but, and it's probably just, you know, now that you're getting older, uh, you've slowed down enough that I can now keep up with you. He mm-hmm. just immediately looks over me and goes, I haven't slowed down at all. You just know enough now to, to understand what I'm saying. That's awesome. Okay. Damn. It's so well, true. Never forget it. Never forget right. that. It was, yeah. it, it was, it was a great moment. Those, there are some great moments at those condos, by the oh. way, the condos are gone. Okay. Now. Uh, the Institute has just been renovated starting, I think like in the next week or two, uh, the, all the dentists who go down to the Panky Institute stay at the Institute. We've built individual dorms. The whole second floor is living space, yeah. first class, unbelievable. So there's a giant living room and that's where those, those, uh, those same kinds of things are going to happen. It's right. really neat. Yeah. And Frank just came back. They had an incredible full class and just incredible transformation down there. Now, I want you to talk about that because your father, again, Dr. Erwin Becker, who was my instructor there, left an incredible mark on us. Um, talk about that because that's a cause that you you and I are both very near and dear on. They are creating the legacy campaign. Can you just talk about that? If people want to contribute to that. They certainly can. And it's a great way to keep the spirit alive in dentistry and help dentists maintain a better life work uh, balance, if you will. Sure. Well, yeah, thank you. The, um, the legacy campaign is, is going on right now. It's a, a five year campaign to raise $5 million for, um, basically scholarship money to help people come take courses, uh, and obviously other things that they'll do with money, uh, like an endowment thing. And, um, one of the things that they've done, which is the neatest thing in the world, uh, in, in the renovation, on the third floor of the new lecture hall, they have named after my father in honor of my father. It's it's Becker Hall, Very and cool. uh, there there there's a dedication. And for those people out there who have has studied under my dad or heard heard him lecture in any way that he's affected them positively, if somebody wanted to honor him, 
while he's still around. He's still around, by the way. He's still kicking. He's still doing great. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, he's allowed us to um, use the dedication of Becker Hall as a fundraising thing for the campaign. So uh, you can go to um, uh, panky.org and click on the Panky Legacy button. And, and if you wanted to uh, con contribute to that, uh, you can put it in honor of, of uh, Becker Hall dedication and those monies will be used for, like I say, scholarships and other things. So it's, um, it's really neat. It's a neat, a neat deal. Uh, I think they're at like 2 million now of the 5 million they want to raise. So That's it's coming awesome. along, coming along and, um, yeah, it's really awesome. And it, it's, it's a really neat thing. Yeah. And if you're watching this broadcast, we're going to post a link to it and you can check it out and, and, oh, cool. and contribute, um, if you want to, and we encourage you to do so. So buddy, I always enjoy our conversations. You and I are going to talk about all the other things that I love talking about with you, the restorative process. I want to get into the lab. You know, I love your lab system. Like your lab system is one of my favorite and how you do that. Um, I think that would just benefit so many people and it's simple too, the way you do it. So oh, we're going sure. to, yeah, we're going to have another conversation, but that'll be on another thread. So Perfect. thank you, my friend. I really appreciate you being on today. So stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. And uh, thank you guys for watching the Best Practices Show. Hey, if you enjoyed today, just do us a favor. Hit the share button, share it with your friends, or send this to one of your buddies or good friends who's maybe struggling with balance and say, hey, look, check this out because it's all possible. You're the greatest profession ever. You can create the life that you want and look back and say, I did it the right way because we get one shot at it. So until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.